This past month, I realized something critical about avoiding burnout and art block. It is one thing I think we all need that we are not getting enough of. So what is this secret ingredient? It isn't painting challenges. It isn't better reference. It isn't painting with friends. It isn't accountability partners. Although all of those things can be helpful. No, the one thing that I have found that has made a huge difference and not just for me, but for creative people everywhere, is boredom. This idea is not my own. This came to me while I was reading Untamed, Glennon Doyle's memoir. This was actually one of the very first interviews Brene Brown did on her podcast way back when, and I had been saving the audiobook of Untamed for quite a while, and finally pulled it out, and I am really glad that I did. So in one passage of Untamed, Glennon is talking about her son and how he is addicted to his smartphone. This is an idea that I am very well acquainted with. I absolutely love Johan Hari's book, Stolen Focus. Um, It has really made waves this year, and it is all about how tech, social media, and our devices are hijacking our attention. So when Glennon talked about feeling like her son's phone was sucking the life and exuberance and joy and creativity out of him, this really wasn't a surprise to me. So I want to go ahead and read you the quote from Untamed. Glennon says, When he turned 13, we bought him a cell phone because he desperately wanted one, and we wanted to make him happy. Slowly, we watched him fade away. He stopped drawing maps and reading and writing, and we stopped finding poems around the house. When he was with us, I could sense his need to be there instead. So even when he wasn't on his phone, he was gone. He was just hovering among us. His eyes changed. They became a little duller and heavier. They'd been the brightest eyes I'd ever seen, and then one day, they just weren't. In his phone, Chase had found a place easier to exist than inside his own skin. That was tragic because inside the itchiness of our own skin is where we discover who we are. When we are bored, we ask ourselves, what do I want to do with myself? We are guided towards certain things. A pen and paper, a guitar, the forest in the backyard, a soccer ball, a spatula. The moment after we don't know what to do with ourselves is the moment we find ourselves right after the itchy boredom is self-discovery, but we have to hang in there long enough without bailing. She continues and says that she finds herself worrying most that when we hand our children phones, we steal their boredom from them. Quote, as a result, we are raising a generation of writers who will never start writing, artists who will never start doodling, chefs who will never make a mess of the kitchen, athletes who will never kick a ball against a wall, musicians who will never pick up their aunt's guitar and start strumming. After reading this, I realized, this is true of me. I have tried to set work boundaries for myself so I don't feel like I always have to be in front of the easel or I always have to be making a YouTube video. And so at 5 p.m. every day, I tell myself that I need to stop creating and just unwind. Except that most of the time, unwinding is me sitting on my sofa with my laptop propped up somewhere on my midsection in the worst posture you can imagine. And I just doom scroll Twitter and Reddit and Facebook on repeat. And the more I thought about this, the more I wondered how many hours, no days or years had I lost to this? This wasn't bringing me any kind of fulfillment. It wasn't helping me to feel connected to others. It didn't even really entertain me. And don't get me wrong, I was already somewhat aware of this. I had realized in the past year that I needed to fill my evenings, fill my free time with opportunities to connect with other people, and I had made that a real priority. Problem was, when I didn't have plans, This was my default activity, and that needed to change. So I put my laptop aside, and I realized I was kind of sick of doom scrolling. I was sick of just perusing everything I could on the internet, looking for that hit of dopamine, looking for that spark of interest or that moment of connection. And I just let myself 
be bored until I started to try and solve this problem and figure out what I genuinely wanted to do instead. And I had an idea, which is that I wanted to sculpt something. The reason you aren't seeing me sculpting in this video is that I wanted this to genuinely be a hobby. I wanted it to be something that was just for me, that wasn't productive, that wasn't serving some greater purpose. I wanted to just make what I wanted to make and keep it for me as a result. And some of my friends who are artists, I realize, are going through the same thing. Learning Blender, trying a totally new way of art making, learning a new medium. When I grow tired of sculpting for a little while, either because my brain isn't seeing what I'm trying to accomplish anymore or I am just not sure what to do next, I switch gears and I do some writing. So this is all to say that if you are not painting as much as you want to, if you feel burnt out, if you feel blocked, if you feel like there is something standing between you and what you really want to be spending your time and filling your life doing, I would give this a shot. Purposefully disconnect yourself from the tools and devices and crutches that are demanding our attention all of the time and purposely encourage yourself to get bored. Spend some time alone with your thoughts and see what ideas come up. See what gets you genuinely excited. See what you suddenly feel motivated to go out and make. This advice might sound simplistic, but I know for a lot of you, this is going to move you in a really positive direction. And if you want more support around this, that makes sense too. There's all kinds of things that can contribute to feeling stuck. It can be a lack of skill set that you need to cultivate. It can be lack of a clear goal. It can be a lack of knowing what roadmap actually gets you there. And if those things are the culprit, these are the kinds of things I help artists with all of the time, I would love to be able to help you in a more holistic way. But setting yourself up for boredom is a really good start. I am not one for New Year's resolutions. I think because when we think of resolutions, we think of kind of abstract goals. Um, and not only that, but New Year's resolutions can sometimes be a little unhealthy from a mindset perspective. They can be unkind to ourselves. They can encourage us to not really accept and cherish who we are today, but instead think, when I achieve this thing that's off in the future, then I will be worthy. But all that being said, I do like an opportunity to start fresh and set intentions. And really specifically, I like setting up systems. So I don't necessarily have some big achievement I want to get to by the end of the year. Instead, I have an idea and a system for how I want to spend my days. And part of that system is going to be reminding myself that when I have unstructured time, I should encourage myself to be bored and see what comes out of that. And I would encourage all of you to do the same. I'm really excited for what that's going to set me up to do this year. And I'm really excited for how I expect it's going to make me feel. I know how it's already made me feel just in the past few days that I've really been diving into this and making space for that boredom. And I think this is especially helpful, at least for me personally, during this time of year. Winter is hard. Um, even if you don't have seasonal affective disorder, I don't know many people who don't feel just a little bit more down and sluggish and overwhelmed in the winter months. I've learned that I'm like really susceptible to burnout during this period. And I think sitting with that boredom and seeing where that carries me makes me feel like that is okay. It's okay that I probably don't have a ton of grand painting ideas right now or that sometimes painting feels a little bit hard. And it's worth remembering that painting is my job. Chances are, if painting is not your job and you sit with that boredom, you are really going to want to dive into this the way that I dive into writing projects or I dive into sculpting. 
And I feel like I can genuinely trust that if I cultivate this, that come springtime, when I have that burst of energy again, and I suddenly feel so much more exuberant and motivated, that's going to pay off. That's going to pay off in terms of what I do in my painting, that pays off in terms of what I put into all of these videos, and it's going to pay off in terms of the things that I want to do to enrich myself. If you want to learn more about what set me off on this way of thinking, I have links to both Untamed by Glennon Doyle and Stolen Focus by Johan Hari down in the description. I tend to really enjoy listening to audiobooks, so I'm going to include the Audible links, but if you are more likely to read an e-reader or you like to have a physical book, I will include the links to those as well. And if this sounds like an awesome start, but you also want comprehensive support and staying on track and reaching your really big goals, I have a link in the description to apply to see if we are fit to work together on a mentorship basis. In the description, I also have the free masterclass that I ran at the very end of 2022 on how to set yourself up to reach your painting goals this coming year. Um, you will be able to watch that replay if you follow the link to the free masterclass that's in the description. And again, if from there you are super excited about the possibility of working together, I have the link to apply to see if we are fit to work together down in the description as well. I know this is kind of unconventional advice. If you have questions about how you can set yourself up to foster that boredom, if you have questions around what this process looks like, I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you have requests for what you would like to see in next week's video, I would love for you to share those with me in the comments as well. Happy New Year, and until next time, happy painting. <laughs>